Good morning. Well, this morning, my message is more, it's, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a testimony, but it starts off with some stuff I learned that was a little bit interesting to me. Um, I'm not good at testimonies. <laughs> I'm much more, uh, I feel much more efficient at sharing what I learned or what I think or what I thought or what God showed me. It's, it's, it's more interesting and hard for me to explain um, or to talk about my personal life, um, probably because I was homeschooled, so I don't know how to associate with other people in a positive way. <laughs> no, <I'm just laughs> but th- this, this message is Mount of Blessing, um, and it starts off with something that I learned. I was reading about Mar- Mount uh, Gerizim, or Garrison. Uh, it's it's a that's a mount in uh, Canaan at Shechem, and this is the place that the Lord first spoke to Abram uh, whenever he whenever Abram entered uh, Canaan, and that's in uh, Genesis twelve one through seven. Now the Lord said to Abram, "Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house and." And to the land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great. And so you shall be blessed, uh, you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse. So we skip over to uh, verse 7. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, or let's see, I guess it was a little before that, the so he went to Shechem, to the oak of Morah. Now the Canaanites were in the land at that time. The Lord appeared to Abram and said to, the, uh, to him, Your descendants I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Now, this is also the place that later uh, Jacob comes and buys some land there. And builds a well. And you might know this well because this is also the well that, uh, that Jesus meets the, the woman at the well. This is right there. In fact, to the Samaritans, their most holy spot on earth, they believed, was this mountain. They believed that this mountain was where they were supposed to worship. They concluded it in their Ten Commandments. They thought that they were supposed to worship on this mountain whenever they worshiped God. Uh, in fact, the reason they thought that is because Moses commanded in uh, Deuteronomy 27.12, Moses commanded the people that when they crossed the Jordan, they were to, let's see here, right here. When you cross the Jordan, then uh, these shall you stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people. And then he lists half the tribes, and then they had it right across from it was Mount Ebal, which was the Mount of Cursing. And that's a different message. But this, but the two mountains are right there, and half the tribes stood on one and gave the blessings, and half stood on the other and gave the curses. And then they actually, on Mount Ebal, they set up, Joshua set up a large stone, and plastered it with the, the, the law on it, and uh, it's, as far as I know, it's still there. And they have it. Um, it they, I think they found a, a stone over there. But so this is the, so this is the where they were commanded to go and give blessings, and so they would go and, and bless on this hill. So Jesus comes along and he's talking to the woman at the well, and she's talking to him, and that's in uh, John four twenty through twenty six. Um, I'm going to read yeah just this last part of it. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. This is the woman talking. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming and is now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. 
For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that uh, Messiah is coming, the one who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will declare all things to us. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. It's real interesting that Jesus chooses to reveal himself, this woman, in that place, in that time. Um, He had just tried to reveal himself as the Christ to Nicodemus. And Nicodemus had a hard time understanding it whenever he came to him. But And it was kind of interesting. He went to, uh, he, he talked to one of the religious leaders, the rich man at the time, from the Jewish side. And then he goes over here to this mountain and reveals himself to the people there at Shechem. So it's, it's really interesting to me. And so I got to thinking. I was like, I would like a mount of blessing. But that they're... Mountains around Amarillo were a little bit rough to come by, <laughs> and so I was I was, I was thinking about it. And 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 Matthew seventeen twenty through twenty one um, entered my mind, and I thought I was thinking about this. And he said to them, "Because of the littleness of your faith, uh, this is because of the littleness of your faith." He's talking to disciples about. For truly, I say to you. If you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. But this kind does not go except by prayer and fasting. So I was wanting to find a way to make prayer real to me and to make, and to, just like Jesus likes to put, God has set up through the Old Testament with the Passover and the Sabbath, and all these different things that reflect and mean something else. So I decided to make a symbolic mountain, symbolizing a mount of blessing. And this would be just for blessings. Um, God impressed on me that I needed to pray for blessings. I don't know why I started doing this, but one day I picked up a shovel and a bucket, and I went to a pile of dirt beside the house, and I decided to make a symbolic mountain. And... Let every shovel of dirt represent a, a blessing of people or somebody that I was praying over. And then I carry the bucket out to the field, and I pour it out on the ground. And uh, this is, sounds a little silly, but after a couple of weeks, I realized something. Not only was I getting more specific with my prayers, coming up with more things to, to bless about, it takes, you know, it takes about eight or ten shovels, generally, depending on how you space it, to fill a bucket. And so I had to come up with eight or ten different groups or people or things to bless every day. And then it was a good reminder, putting it out in the field, that every shovel full of dirt that's there is something I've prayed over and, some, and, and, and a prayer that's out there waiting for God to answer. So that was neat to me, and that helped me to get better at praying. Um, and then I... I realized something through the process is that every single thing that I prayed for came, happened. Every single thing. Every single thing. I can't think of a single thing I've prayed for that God hasn't answered out there. I don't know why, but I know he called me to to pray for blessing, to ask for blessing. Um. I, I, it's, I started this probably a year ago, maybe a year ago, doing this periodically. And in that time, I mean, at, at, at the time, um, I had two lawsuits going on. <laughs> one, one a, a guy's wife was suing me for, uh, for he got killed on a job. And then I had uh, my ex-wife taking me to court to try to take the kids and move to Lubbock. And so that was those deals going on and then many other things going on. So I, I decided that this wasn't, this wasn't a, this wasn't a mount of necessarily asking for things. This wasn't a mount of cursing for thing over things. This wasn't about, this was mount just specifically this particular type of prayer was just for asking for blessing. Um, and so I prayed for blessing over those and, both of them got resolved 
way better than I deserve, way better than I ever, ever could ever imagine. Um, some of the next things that happened, I, I prayed that I prayed God, you know, increase my territory, bless my land, bless my, bless my, my influence, bless, and, and every, every single one down the road. I, I breath, dear God, uh, turn the hearts of, of my children to their fathers and, the, and then turn them to me also because you're their father. And, and, uh, He's worked miracles. God, dear God, speak to my children. Make them great. Increase their talents. Um, everything that I prayed for, he's doing actively. Many other things, I realize that I was already blessed. Meaning the things I didn't realize before, until I started asking for blessing, I didn't realize that I had it. And I think that's another big important thing we need to remember in our life, is whenever we, whenever we bless things, and then a lot of times we realize God was blessing us all along because he loves us. One thing that I think really matters a lot that started to develop through this is praying from a position or praying with authority. So when I'm praying, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a friend, I'm a son, I'm a servant, I'm a member Whatever I'm blessing, I pray from that position. Dear God, bless my wife because I'm asking you as her husband. Dear God, bless my church because I'm a member of it. Bless, bless my children because I'm their father and you are too. You know, whenever, I, whenever I, I started praying from a position of authority, not that I have any authority on my own, but I feel like I have a right to ask for things because God's given me that right. Another thing I noticed through this process is my attitudes about things changed. Things don't go wrong. Things go different than I would like them sometimes. <laughs> things go different than I planned, but there is no going wrong if you're under God's blessing. There's just different than what you would have liked. And so when things fail, when there's troubles, when things don't turn out right, well, that's the best that it was going to be because I'm under God's blessing. That's the best that was going to happen because I'm under God's blessing. So well, I think that's important. It changed my whole attitude about how I viewed life and how I viewed the things around me. If something happens, it's no big deal. It's just, it's just the way it is. So, essentially, since I'm not really good at explaining a lot of this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it here in front of you. My, this morning, I'm just going to do my normal thing I would do um, here in front of you guys, if that's all right. Your Father, I praise you and I thank you. God, I ask that you would bless my wife. I'm asking this as her husband. Lord, today when she wakes up, I pray that she would be rested. I pray that, the, that she would have patience and control over the children. That her heart would be tender towards you. That she would find time to spend time with you. That you would speak to her. That your Holy Spirit would would minister to her, and that she would hear your voice and respond. I'm asking this as her husband, Father. I'm asking this under your authority and the, the, whole, the authority that's over her. Let me be a blessing to her and bless her life, Father. I pray this over my wife in the name of Jesus. Dear Father, I pray a blessing over my children. Lord, you are their father. Turn their hearts to you. Turn their thoughts to you. Bless them with the understanding and wisdom that only comes from you. Let them hear from your Holy Spirit and let them respond and let them seek to be a part of your kingdom and to honor you. 
I pay a special blessing over them as their authority and a joint son with them, with you. Lord, I pray for James and his talents, with his, with his music. I pray for, pray for Gracie with her artwork and her sports. Lord, I pray for Mason and his creativity and energy. And I pray for John, that, Lord, that you would just bless the little things in his life that he likes to, to play with. Lord, I pray for Ava. I pray that you would make her a strong leader. God, I pray for Emma, that you would bless her and that you would protect her and encourage her. Lord, I pray for Olivia. Lord, I bless my children. Help me to honor you with them and give me the strength. Lord, I thank you for my children. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for my church. It's your church, Father. Lord, I pray that you would just, that you would grow its influence. I pray that you would grow its leadership. I pray that you would grow and expand its territory. Lord, as you have done in the past and will do in the future, I pray that you send men and women of resources to be leaders, to be strong, that, the, that these leaders would be able to delegate Lord, I pray for a blessing over our leadership of this church. I pray that they would have time with their families, that they would enjoy their life, that they would enjoy their ministry, that you would be a strong witness through them, that you would give them guidance and wisdom. Lord, I pray a special blessing over the leadership of this church. Dear God, I pray a special blessing over my life group. I pray that you would bless each and every member in it, that you would draw us closer together, that you would help us to reach out to other people and to bring them in, that your love would be shown through our group, and that they would be open and honest with each other and you, and that you would grow the relationships of each person to you, and, and that your spirit would be able to move freely within the group. Lord, I pray a special blessing over our life group. Dear God, I pray a special blessing over, over my land, the vegetables, the goats, the livestock, the people. May it bring a, be a place of produce and peace. May you minister to the men and women that are on it and protect. May it be a place of service, and may it ultimately be used for your glory and to minister to you. Lord, I pray for a special blessing over the work of that you have given me, and I pray that I would honor you in it. I pray a special blessing in the name of Jesus. Dear God, I pray a special blessing over my workers. Lord, I pray that you would that you would lead them to you, that you would help that you would convict them of the things in their life that pull them away, that you would use me as an example to them. Lord, I pray that you would that you would bless them in their finances, bless them in their work and their energy. Lord, I pray a special blessing over each and every one of them, that they would be able to come to you in a real and true way and understand you. God, that they would seek you and that they would find you. God, I pray a special blessing over the workers. Dear God, I pray a special blessing over, the, over this area and this part of the country. God, give us wise leaders. Give us generous protection from the storms and the things that come in life. Lord, I pray that you would bring healing, that you would bring servants, and that you would bring a close-knit community, Father, that worships and serves you. Dear God, I pray a blessing over this community and this place. Dear God, I ask for a special blessing over your and I's relationship. Lord, may I seek you, and may you give your tender mercies and witness to me, Father. Your spirit, speak to me. Help me to have wisdom and understanding and to be able to use that to serve you and to grow your kingdom. Please help me 
in my hard times to seek you and to always have a tender heart. I pray this blessing over your and I's relationship, Father. Your Father, as I carry this bucket of dirt to the spot out in the field, I pray that you carry the blessings that I've prayed over and the, and the people that I've prayed over, carry them with you in your heart. Father, as I pour this bucket out, I pray that you pour out your blessings on those that have been prayed over and the things that I've asked for, Father. Pour out your blessing. And Father, when rain comes and washes it out, may it only increase the base. And God, whenever the weeds come and grow, may the more the blessings that you give be what, be what smothers them out. Lord, I pray and I thank you for your blessing. David said, turn my eyes to the mountain from where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Well, I don't think that's very long, but that's my, that's my message today. That's, that's what God has, has impressed on my heart to do at different times. This is a, a, a method of prayer I use for blessing. It's different from a quiet time, different from other, other methods. But this is one that I have found is probably one of the most effective uh, works in my life for my realization of God's work and what he's doing. That's it. Thank you, Jesus.